So you may have heard of SRI before, but did you know that their building used to be Roush Racing? Rambo here, who you've seen in our other videos, used to work here, and he's gonna be our tour guide. We started this deal in uh, the Exide Batteries with Jeff Burton, 1997. We call it Roush Racing South. This is originally Dick Moroso's building. In 1996, I put the horseshoe up, and it made it out here, and it's still up. And I think that's pretty interesting. Where'd you get the shoe? I found it in my yard, mowing grass. What is that? And I pulled up the old rusty shoe. I come in here sandblasted painted and put it up when roush come down here and said i'm gonna start a team in mooresville i was oblivious now i'm listening to all these guys talking on the podcast and i've talked to mark martin and some other people they freaking hated us jack told them we're gonna do it this way buddy parrot come in and then it was just like do not help them guys in mooresville do not give them nothing them. <laughs> exactly it was us no against them and it was roush right. Right. You know what I mean? Right. And it was us against them. And I didn't realize, and I was working here, and I didn't realize how bad it was. Yeah. I've been uh, selling steel uh, to all the race teams since 1996. So we were coming here when it was Roush Racing, when they ran the race team out here and selling steel to these guys. So this building's been involved in racing for a long time. I acquired a business called Roush Yates Performance Parts. So it was a working race team. Then it was a performance parts business much like it is now. So we made some changes in here, you know, in kind of the aesthetics of the place. I was like, well, we got to paint this floor. And then I had somebody come in and quote the, quote the paint the floor. And I thought, the floor's just fine, Blue. <laughs> <laughs> None of these offices were here when I came in. So we installed these offices uh, for the executive team so they can kind of get a view on it. Are they just built on top of the just surface built, plate? Yeah, we were going to take the surface plate out. And the guy goes, man, that'll be really expensive to take that out of there. The floor just kind of goes this and up and then over and down. <laughs> so it's different now because the offices were up against the wall. And then the walkway was in front of them. Huh. So they sort of moved them around. And the reason why I know that for sure is when I was back here in 06, 07, something like that, I had an office and it was right here. And I had a window. Uh, I had to come in from the hallway. So these little stubs here, kind of where the walls were to yeah, the individual so. offices? I think, yes. And then the walkway was down the front and it actually had glass. Huh. Just like Bahari did, it had glass in the front where you could uh, go in. There was an opening to come in the front, and then you could walk down the hall and look into the shop. You worked here two different times. Yes. Interesting. Yes. These offices were. This area was still there, and it was just overhang started here and went that way. Yes. Okay. So the yes. front of the building was still the same width. Yes. Okay. Yes. And then the wall was here. We come in. The surface plate is still here. <laughs> believe it or not and that's that's where we did our setup and we literally from here back to that wall for sure was this was our um this was our assembly area this is all we had we just had this right here and then we had a suspension room probably still there just something different now so jeff burton's first cars at roush were set up on that plate right there yes and there's yes. in and fact, still there. <laughs> the cool thing about that is we were probably about right here. And I love the story because Jeff Jeff was really hands-on. Frankie started to get the cars off the plate. I'd bring them over here and I'd bump steer them. We'd nut and bolt them, put them on a the truck. Well, that particular night, Jeff was here and me and Jeff were bump steering the car. He was underneath changing slugs. I was running the numbers. And we bump steered the car and then, and then we took that car to Texas and we won the race. So the first thing Jeff says to me is, I guess I'm gonna have to bump steer all the cars <laughs> because we finally won the race. I mean, we knocked on the door a bunch, but when we won Texas, um, he actually did help me bump steer that car. Huh. And I, that's one of my coolest memories ever when, you know, you see Jeff Burton, nobody can really look at him, look as he's a hands-on kind of guy, but he was 100% a hands-on kind of guy and as good a mechanic as anybody we had in here because he did it himself for a long time huh. and i really respected that everybody respected it lance hill lance romance he had a suspension room i'm gonna say this is probably the same because we did have the parts room up there and we had two parts guys up there but i'd have to say that one of these rooms which is now an office was his suspension room and it, that, all it was was just a concrete building. And we did the front and rear suspension stuff. Lance was in here. Scott Deal worked in here as well. And he also went on the road. Was it all the same layout whenever you came back to work here later? Yes. Except that part was added? <laughs> it's a whole lot more crowded. 
that there was a surface plate here, a metal surface plate that laid in the floor here. And Buddy Parrott and Tommy Morgan worked on that thing trying to get it to where they wanted to level it. And I bet you to this day, because somebody had picked it up and put a bow in it, and they tried to level it. And this was like a year project. <laughs> this thing this wasn't like, oh, let's work on this. Him and Tommy worked on it, worked on, worked on it. And I bet you to this day, wherever that plate's at, it's sitting somewhere, it's not level, and it's got a bow in it. Yeah. Somewhere. Because they never did get that thing squared away. And we'd always gave them a hard time about it. Then you come through here, and it's pretty much the same. And this was our fab shop. And, uh... What cars like were said, in here the second time you worked here? The second time we were here, I worked with, uh, Matt Kenseth, Mark Martin, and Jeff Burton on the All-Star, the 9 car with the Pennzoil. Huh. And then we did, uh bush cars there with them so this was the because the, by the then the cup shop truck. was in concord yes so this was bush yes. and truck yeah okay and we had uh brad parrot was in here with me he had greg biffle and then i had the the rotating drivers and there were i'm telling you we had cars piled in here like you wouldn't believe but it, it's all it's all pretty much pretty much the same bobby hudson run the fab shop that's a name I've heard before. Yeah, Bobby's Bobby's done a lot of stuff. Good fabricator, good all-around guy. I probably don't do a good enough job of explaining to you guys the lengths that I go to to find some of these pictures that you get to see in these videos. For example, those ones of the Jeff Burton car. I found that there were some really grainy pictures and like a really crappy scan of this popular mechanics magazine of those pictures. And it is from March 2000. So what I had to do, I went on eBay and I found one of these and I bought it just to open it up, find the page, take pictures of the pictures to use them as B-roll for a grand total of maybe 12 seconds for your enjoyment. I did enjoy flipping through it. These old magazines are pretty neat. Yeah, here it is. It even comes with a big old poster. But that's it. That's the page. All these pictures were taken inside this shop in 1999. This area right here is underneath where the mezzanine is, and you can see those stairs back there. You go up there, and there's just, just like parts and stuff. But this is all, I mean, this is probably back in the uh, back building, which you'll see later in the video. If somebody wants this magazine, if you order a hat or a shirt from staplesandautoworks.com, and you send me an email with your order number, the first person to do that, we will sign this and put it in your package, because I don't know what I'm going to do with it now. I can remember having my welder in here. <laughs> are we in your way? <laughs> I'm so sorry. Um, they had a welder in here and stuff. This right here is where I realized, I think I was probably about 40 years old. I was welding something and I couldn't see it. And I finally realized, and I still remember this setting, that I realized that I was going to have to get glasses. <laughs> and that's, that's what this reminds me of. Out of all the stuff that's going on, that's what this reminds me of. And like I said, it wasn't that deep because that wall's moved out. And I mean, it wasn't it wasn't really that big, and we had some you know we had some equipment in here, and our parts room was literally that that little breezeway up there, aisleway, whatever you want to call that, mezzanine. That's a big word, and that was it. And everything else was stuffed in here. I mean, what, I'm telling you, we didn't have nothing. We didn't get nothing from Liberty. Everything we did, we did on our own, and we didn't have nothing with. And the way Buddy Parrot, and if you. You heard about Buddy Parrot, no Buddy Parrot. He's a, he's a freaking miracle worker. I don't know how he did it. But we got our stuff together and we come out of the box and we were running we were running real good. When did the, they eventually move Mark's team to here? Wasn't that like 98 or something? Yes, yes. 98. That's, that's what's happening and I was like, peace out, boys. <laughs> I don't want none of that. Is I don't that want what, none of that. Is that what drove you to go somewhere else? Or? Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> pretty much. And then... Uh, this was the body shop and this is hard this is hard to uh Thank you. this is hard to to tell because they put the mezzanine and everything up but what i remember is we had a we had a body shop in here where you could work it wasn't near this big and it had a paint booth back in the corner i think you can still see where it was you can in the floor yeah i'm pretty sure there's oh, there's a surface plate there it still says Roush on it. Hmm. So what's the what's the red paint story? But I don't the red paint story. <laughs> <laughs> I told you the red paint story. I don't think the camera was on though. Oh, that's good. 
No, I just, um... First of all, I'm a little confused because we went on the front of it and that wall's in the way to come on the front of it. It's like it was right there. And I think it was steel, not, not epoxy. But anyway, I painted, for some reason we had to paint the red around there. And see, this wouldn't have been it because this, when this guy puts these plates in, he colors them. And when we, this one that we had over there was steel and we had to paint it. So I painted the red on it and I put jack stands up with a rope around it and the guys kept going through and stepping on it. So I thought it'd be funny. I went and I got a stool and I sat it in the middle of the plate. I went and got my shotgun out of my truck and I sat in the middle of the plate holding the shotgun, <laughs> daring somebody to step on my paint. <laughs> and everybody laughed, they thought it was funny. But um, that come back to haunt me in different ways. I don't want to mention, but it did. <laughs> <laughs> it did. <laughs> Somebody remembered that down the road. Yeah, I'm pretty sure the body shop was there because that was it. Was the body shop in the next one over? Did they have it here originally, then add it, and then move it down? Because no, there's I definitely think... body shop. There's like paint on the floor still yeah. back here. But this, from there to here, was it. I, you know what I mean? This, I mean, this like, was outside for over yeah, here back in 97. Yeah, this was outside. I'm pretty sure. I mean, it's, I'm not saying that they didn't. Is that a downdraft booth? Yeah, this is what I was wondering what this was here. Now, you know, I might could be wrong, but that definitely where the paint shop was, but... Yeah, yeah. you can see where the walls were bolted down and... Yep. Look at all the paint back there. <laughs> Must have been where they mixed it. Yeah. Yeah. So maybe I'm mistaken. Maybe it was a little deeper than what I thought. Looking for some type but of ventilation. Yeah, the big, uh, big pipe there and there. This, well, I mean, you look at the floor and you look at this right here. This was definitely the, this was definitely the, the body shop. So I was wrong. I guess it did come back oh. here. I want to know what's under there. Looks like a downdraft booth. Wouldn't you say? I, I don't it's full know. paint. <laughs> yeah. So this yeah, was a downdraft. Must have been or something. I don't know. Shit, I don't. I don't know. Yeah, yeah and thing. it goes over there, probably to that one. The ducting. Yeah. And they come out of the floor here and then go up out of the. Yeah, that's right above that. Yeah. That, that would make sense. So that'd be the updraft then. Yeah, yep, sure enough. Here. Interesting, and it's like we're ready to go again. You just put yeah. the ducting back yeah, in. Yeah, absolutely. You get yeah. a paint booth again. There's definitely paint residue in there. And dust. I wonder when the last car was painted here, where they took <laughs> it out. Well, you know, they don't paint cars no more. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? I mean, you don't even need a paint booth. So is this Pennzoil yellow? Probably. With some Super Chips red. Uh, probably some Valvoline in there. What did what did Matt on have on his car? Do you remember? Dewalt. Yeah. Man, yeah, so maybe that's Dewalt yellow. Yeah, there's like no metallicness to it. The pencil cards were black. That could be oh. Scott's green. You know, when we was here, Carl Edwards was running the truck out of here. I remember that when I come back the second time. I have a theory here, and I want your input on it. I was thinking, why am I so fascinated by this? classic NASCAR stuff. Why does it captivate me so well? And I don't know if any of you guys have ever thought about this. I know most of you watching this video have watched us before. So we share the same affliction. But my theory is with all the craziness and all the negativity that is in your face on a daily basis these days, it seems, you know, digging back into this race of history when it seemed like the world was simpler is almost like a type of comfort food. I feel like for me, it, you know, Reminds me of being a little kid whenever I didn't have to worry about anything. Whatever was going on in the world was not my concern. All that mattered to me was, do I have my toy cars? Do I have a place to play with them? That's it. What do you think? Am I on something here? Am I crazy? Have you ever thought about this? Maybe I do a lot more reflecting than the average guy, but I don't, I don't know. Maybe you should think about it and let me know what you come up with. What, what's in there? What's the seed? At the same time, you can't keep your head buried in the sand and neglect the present day Otherwise, you're no different than the guy who talks about high school football when they're 45. The, another big reason why I like this history and hearing these people's stories is because I like to learn things from them 
that will help me in the present and beyond. Because somebody like Rambo here, it could have taken him five years to figure something out, whether it be dealing with people or something technical. And he could explain what he learned in those five years to us in one minute. Would you not listen to somebody for one minute to save five years of struggling? On that note, be a good person. Don't be a turd, hold the door for people. Um, the average guy out there is not bad. The worst ones are the loudest and it got, it got crappy one person at a time. It can get better one person at a time. I firmly believe that. And car guys are some of the best guys to do it. So let's do it. Yeah, there's where a lift used to be in a drain. It's like a wash pit. Yeah. It had a drain and you see how it's like that. Was this wash pit when you were here? I don't know. I don't remember it. Maybe this map over here says what that used to be. Oh <laughs> uh, yeah, it shows you where the paint booths used to be and how cars were oriented and parked in here. The surface plates. I guess there was another surface plate in the front room okay, that now wasn't there. Look at that. That's the front surface plate. Remember I told you the offices were up against the wall? Yeah. And then this wall went right here where you could look in. That's what it's showing right there. Interesting. And then this was the lobby and then there was a conference room, but it was long ways. But that's the lobby and then the offices. See how they're up against the wall? Yeah. Well, no, they're not either. No, they're not. But that's that's about the way it was. Then see what I got confused with is then we had the fab shop, but we had a little another room and then the body shop with the shirt with the um the uh paint booths back there and then you can see the trucks outside and see this truck's on the other side of the fence because they had that building and that's where junior was with the chassis dyno buddy parrot such a joy to work for i mean you go <laughs> you would go tell him something you say buddy i was racing me and frankie would race them rental cars back to the airport buddy i hit a damn traffic barrel and scratched a rent a car up i think they're going to charge us and buddy being buddy he's like scratched a rent a car that ain't nothing let me tell you about the time i parked a rent a car in a mo in a motel room <laughs> <laughs> and i said okay we're good and that's that's the way buddy was always had a better story and and you never had to worry about it and you always had your back we used to have <laughs> we used to um at the end of practice, you always we run happy hour. At the end of practice, you get a tire sheet somewhere not close to the garage. Practice is over. You've been going all day. This is back when you changed motors, did this, did that. You're burn up. You're hot. You're tired. And you'd walk out there and push the car back. Well, we'd start walking out there. And now everybody in the garage is the same way. Everybody's dragging ass. Everybody's like, I've had enough. You know, it's, it's, it's a long day. Happy hour is over. Buddy gets on the radio and says, first one to the car gets $100. So all these guys are dragging ass out. Here comes the 99 crew running fast as they can. <laughs> Blow by everybody and go up there and whoever gets to the car first gets a $100 bill. And I thought that was pretty awesome. We had a break room right here. I remember about the break room more than anything. It was in this corner. And what I remember about this break room more than anything his buddy called us all in there and told us that Harry Hyde had died. Now, Buddy worked for Harry for a long time, and I mean, thought the world of him. And he come in there and told us that Harry Hyde had died. So that was either 96 or 97. Wow. And that's the first time I seen Buddy really shaking and upset. But um, that happened right there in the break room. And like I said, they've, they've moved some stuff around, so, but I know it was in this back corner. I know that, and it, you know, obviously, when you get a building, you know, when Greg come in here, he's like, I need offices here, 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 and here. We had Joe Werner, show car Joe, driving a truck. Nobody living in here this time. Nobody living in here. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta give a shout out to Tommy Rigsby. I mean, he got in a truck and went to California with me, and I never drove a truck before, except in the military, and I mean, I know what it's like now, since I've had my license since 1989, putting a new guy up in the truck. I know what it's like. I don't know what he was thinking. <laughs> I mean, because I about got the hang of it about Hickory on the way back. <laughs> and, and you know, and how he decided that I'd go with him. But that's back when them truck drivers, they'd drive 20 hours, all you had to do is let them take a nap. Our motors from Liberty, 
or not Liberty, I'm sorry, from Livonia. But we still had a motor shop. Bob Rinaldi was back here. And our tuners were back here and we had some machinists and stuff. And um, I'm not exactly sure what all they did. I know that they didn't build motors <laughs> because we were getting our motors from Livonia. And um, oh. <laughs> I got the keys. You got the keys? But this fight's never changed. And if you do some research, it might have been, um, this might have been where Bob Rinaldi did his motors because he did the motors for um, Moroso. Oh, uh, so this, the engine shop may have already been here. Yes. And they just kind of, you know, yes, tinkered. Yes, exactly. They, they dressed the motors. They done some, you know, some different stuff. Pretty interesting story in the politics and everything that went on. But Bob built a motor. We put it in and went to Michigan. It's always something. I remember like it was yesterday. We put that motor in. Burton went out. Before he went out to qualify, he called me up in the trailer and he said, Hey man, your dad just had a heart attack. You need to go home. And I said, all right, let me get the race shops ready. Qualifying's done. And I said, good luck. Got in a van with Jack and we took off to the airport. Got to the airport, Jack's phone rang and said, Burton's on a pole by two tenths. That was our first pole. I was at the airport at Willow Run with Jack Got in an airplane with Zantop, Dave Zantop was with Jack for a hundred years, and he flew me to Wheeling, West Virginia, and I went and see my dad. My dad actually made it, but he he had a quadruple bypass. And to think all the stuff that I was going through and how that happened like that, and Jack, before I got on a plane, said, "Thanks a lot for your help. I appreciate it. That's awesome." Huh. You know what I mean? Yeah. And what's awesome is I got on an airplane. I think it was a King Air. Me and Zantop. He said, where are we going? I said, I don't know, let's look around. You know, I got the little airport maps out, look around, <laughs> and Wheeling, West Virginia looks good. I called my sister and said, pick me up in Wheeling. We flew, said, good luck. And then I got out and then I got on a plane. I made it back for the race because I was a tire changer, so I had to be back for the race, but that's the kind of guy Jack was. Wow. You know what I mean? And, that's awesome. And, huh. and, and if you'd have been in a, we always, we had these 19 passenger vans, church vans, that's what we rode. That was what we rode in. We flew a lot of places, but we had to ride in them too sometimes. But we was in one of them, and Jack was driving, and we was up there where he's from. He scared me to death. Going down these back roads to Will Run, and I was like, what is he doing? And he just talking on the phone, just, <laughs> just getting it. And I was like, I hope I make it to the airport. <laughs> we took that motor out, and between Liberty losing their freaking mind, because they put Bob Rinaldi's motor in, that motor got taken out and got shoved off in a corner and that never happened again. Yes, yeah, so I was in this toolbox the other day and I was looking for a inch and an eighth wrench to take a regulator off of a uh, off a bottle and look who signed that, Robert Yates. Put his initials or put his name in it. His whole name. So this was his. Somebody done stole his wrench. So that was his wrench he used. And a lot of these other ones in here say Roush, like that says Roush 99. And uh, just, Pretty amazing, I guess. What's it say, Ralph? Ninety nine. Because when we got the original toolbox, I put it together and engraved every single thing in there. That's not. That's yours, isn't it? No, but that's not my writing. Oh, here's a uh, Roush fifty. Robert Yates, look at that. That's amazing. That's got to be worth more than a retail value. <laughs> yeah, you better hide it now. Everybody, hundreds of thousands of people are gonna know it's in that box now. BDR T22 is like. That's Bill Davis. Yeah, I don't know what the T is for. It looks like it was added after the fact, but it, it says like, TB, number 19 TB. Tommy Baldwin. Tommy Baldwin. One Someone thing I do. knew what they were doing when they were putting these tools together. <laughs> MMR 17. What's MMR? Oh, here's another MMR engine cart. <laughs> Ain't that funny how that stuff gets everywhere? When I when I get new stuff, I, I put my name or my initials on it and I put the date. And now, I'll pull out stuff and we're getting the kids from NASCAR Tech stuff and be like, when was you born? And I show them a wrench and it was like 689 when I got it. <laughs> and they're like, yeah, about 15 years after that. Oh, it, it's crazy. Now, interested. Yeah, it's got a <laughs> 88 RYR. Oh, that's cool. What is that one? JRST. 
Jack Roush Super Truck. That's what they used to call them, Super Trucks. I got a sticker that says Roush Super Truck. So that's like a 1995, 96 one yes. right there. Oh, yes. there's, there's more And it's on one here. inch. It says Roush. Roush. It's one inch. That right there is what we use to, um, what somebody used on the truck team to torque the um, lug nuts. Oh, there's yellow because paint in there, welded. too. Yep, it's welded on. So you put it on your you put it on your torque wrench. You don't have to worry about dropping a socket. Every toolbox had two of them and two torque wrenches, and that's exactly where I come from. Jack Rouse Super Truck. That's old. It was when they started that series. It was the <laughs> Craftsman Super Trucks. Yeah, I remember seeing that. That reminds me, the truck in the picture is actually in the most recent video we posted right before this one with Mike Skinner. So you should check that out if you haven't seen it yet. Ninety nine shocks. Ain't that cool? I'm glad he brought us back here. Was, yeah, man. But see, was, if you look at the if you look at the older stuff, Mac, because back in the day, Mac was really good to us guys. Like we got a forty percent discount, and on tools, it was huge. That's why I got a hundred thousand dollars worth of tools <laughs> because you could not not buy them. You know what I mean? So you buy stuff that you really didn't need. And actually, I got a toolbox at home, and I was moving it yesterday, and it wouldn't. Um, my tractor wouldn't pick it up. <laughs> This one is welded and just has a six on it. It doesn't say anything else. Now some guys, some guys did that where they could reach down on the sway bar and take the nut off the top of the sway bar. Some of them, some of them would reach down, but some of them would do that and didn't have to reach all the way down there. Here's a 99 CTS Crushing Truck Series. So this is probably like Carl Edwards Super Chips yeah. truck. I remember when Carl got his super chip and we went out and put it in his, he had a, whatever it was. We sat there and programmed it and we took off. It was pretty awesome. Did it work? Yeah, it worked. <laughs> it worked pretty good. That's the coolest thing ever. RYR. I'd take that Robert Yates wrench and frame that thing. Here's uh, oh, 55 MWR, Michael Waltrip. <laughs> we, can, we can auction it off, maybe. And you see, what happens with this is, is somebody had worked there, and it ended up in their toolbox. Then now, whose toolbox is this? Or is this a shop just, toolbox? It's just a shop toolbox. Don't you know what I'm saying? And that's how it'll migrate. I, I got a times tool boxes lined up coming in here to get you know to go into the to get consigned and then i think they just take the random that's tools some, out of them oh no that's boxes. classic it, i got i got one of them and then i got the tape measures was that the, in that drawer it was just sitting oh, on top there, sitting on top here's a number 19 ems everham everham what kind of wrench is that i ain't got no idea that's a little weird it's a 13 weird little thing this looks like yeah. a cereal box wrench yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but see, all this cobalt and stuff, this stuff wasn't even around. <laughs> Look at us, we walk around this shop, and now the most exciting thing is this toolbox. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Number nine. Somehow or another, Abraham stuff ended up in here. Maybe that could be like nine bush car. That yeah, could have been. Like you said, the, the Penzo car was number nine. Um, yeah. Ooh, is there anything on those hammers? Craftsman. No, not the Craftsman. We was pretty much across the board, Mac. Mac did a good job back in the day. We got another wrench over here. I need to take a picture of that. Yeah. Buddy Parrot would love that. Maybe we should take this up front and like put it in Greg's office or something. Somebody doesn't come in here and take it. Do not lose this. Mm -hmm. No, this was open. This was open. I mean, the the bad lighting and the sh floor. Yeah is what it was you know what i mean <laughs> there's dinos oh okay so you can like see everything we actually had yeah tear down room assembly room inventory yeah, cylinder head yeah, there's one of them just like grinder and all that type of stuff did you guys do pit stop practice outside yes where was that where at? the truck where the truck was all the stuff would be under the overhang and they just come right down here and we do pit stops. We had Frankie Stoddard change front tires and I changed rear tires and Scott Deal jacked. And um, there wasn't a better group of guys when we come together on that 99. It was it was pretty cool. Did you ever have any interactions with the Penske guys being right next door? No, not really. What was that building built? 
that building was built in like 91 or something i remember when they moved in i remember what i remember about that is that black cab over truck and trailer do you remember that thing looked like a train mm -mm. Yeah, oh the, the penske one the with the the dish hub caps and yes like, everything yeah, yeah yeah i remember that seeing that thing I'm like what in the world are they doing it's always after we do the video someone's in the comments like oh you should have asked me i have pictures in there I'm like, <laughs> yeah if i could post like a pre-video say hey we're doing this send yeah. me all the pictures you have then we could but Cool. Yeah. Meanwhile, if you're watching this and you have pictures of a race shop in the 80s, 90s, early 2000s, just send them to me anyway so I'll have them. <laughs> no matter like, what it is, yeah. yeah I kind of like collect them so if we ever get to a building, I'm like, I already have that. I don't have to dig up the random Facebook post I found it on. What kind of stuff do you guys have in here, like used parts? Oh, and gosh, yeah. Stuff? So we do have used parts uh, division, and that is... Um, that is pretty cool. Like we get all the used parts from the cup teams. So you say, you know, you have a part typically for a NASCAR, you know, top series NASCAR. They might have a lifespan of, you know, 20 races. And most cup teams will run it for, you know, two, three, four, five races max. And they'll say, all right, we need to get a new one in. You know, that one's lifed out for them, but it's still got, you know, 75% of its life left. So we'll take that part. We'll put it in our used parts division and, uh, you know, race teams from I mean, from truck teams to late model stock teams to, you know, just anybody. I mean, hot rod shops come in here and they'll buy those parts with plenty of mileage left on them, but just not quite cup ready anymore. So it's a small, small part of our business. Overall, it's just new parts we sell here from like 400 different manufacturers we represent and we distribute for. Um, and, you know, pretty much everything to get your car on racetrack from bumper to bumper. You yeah. used to run around and you used to deliver stuff. Pick up a truck and a trailer. <laughs> yeah. yeah, man. Oh, yeah. That's yeah. awesome. That's one thing I can say about you. You'd be like, what do you need? I'll go get it. I'll go get it. What yeah, do you need? Yeah, that's exactly right. And that's why it is like it is today yeah, because right. of that right there. Didn't say and a lot of people don't know that. Yeah. But you'd be like, man, oh, I need this. I'll be right back. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I'd frantically try to find it. Yeah. <laughs> yep. We always say we do these things because race cars end up in museums. They're talked about. They're preserved. It's documented. But the buildings they came from often kind of disappear off into obscurity and we don't think they should because those are important places that's where friends are made lessons are learned cars were built races are won and lost in that building or these other buildings that we look at in these other videos and going there with somebody who used to work there is the only way we will be able to see what life was like in that place back in the day otherwise you just you go in there and it's just a part store. You go in there, you buy stuff, you're like, oh, this place looks like it used to be a race shop. Yeah, but what do those walls tell you? And there's so many buildings like that around here. It's insane. A ton. You would never even know. Yeah, I mean, now we've gotten... And some the... of them are like, you know, like just normal office building, vape shop, barbecue joint. Like, it's just crazy. If you're new here and don't know, we have a bonus channel where we post nonsense that's less polished. It's called Stapleton 42 Extra. You should check it out. Uh, also... The race car is primered. You will see that in the bodywork video, which will be coming up soon. You should comment that you want to see more videos with Rambo because he's really cool and he's worked a lot of really cool places. Yeah, he, in the Bahari video, which is very similar to this with him also, if you haven't seen that, add that to your watch list. What, did, what was the phrase he used? He said, I've been everywhere but the grave and seen everything but the wind. Is that, <laughs> is that what he said? I think so. Yeah, yeah he's been everywhere. And if you missed out on these old Winston Cup style hats, first time, we just got more on stapletonautoworks.com. They're like the Richardson 112 snapback yeah, hats. That's a boom tube eagle. Yes, a boom tube eagle holding a wrench. And as you see, I have it in here written nice hat. I have nice hat and I have work hat. And I had to do this because I kept accidentally doing work in a nice hat and then I would have to pull another one off the shelf to wear for another filming. So now I have a dedicated nice one and my dedicated work hat. 